Hi, my name is Coach Judith, and I am part of the Quarantine Coding Club. We are teaching people how to code online while we are all stuck in our homes. For those of you who are new to our series, I am a teacher of computer coding and have been doing that in classrooms for about six years. I've worked in industry and I'm uh, also enjoying teaching from home now as we all transition to something new. As part of this series, we look at videos that my coworker Steven has made where he talks about the process of coding and design and how art and computer science meet. Uh, this is part of a series. The first couple minutes of his five minute video were discussed by me in another video that you can also find. Um, and now we're gonna start watching the next three minutes of his five minute video. We are uh, two minutes in uh, the first couple of minutes. He talked about why he's doing this and he is discussing how he has tried to speed up the process of creating these videos that were taking him about eight hours to create. Uh, he's trying to speed up that process and make it faster using uh, coding. So let's look at the video and here goes. Shotcut is a software that creates writings called save files. Okay, so we talked about in the first half of the video, I think I still have it up here, Shotcut is the software that Steven is using to create these videos. Shotcut is free and uh, you can download it if you are creating videos uh, yourself. Here it goes, let's keep watching. Which happened to be in a syntax called XML. All right, so Shotcut, creates files using XML. So for those of you, probably a lot of people are familiar with the term HTML. Oh, sorry, HTML. This is some HTML. HTML is the language, they call it the language of the web. So websites are created in HTML. This is some sample HTML code here. This code is creating a heading and a paragraph. Um, it's somewhat easy to read. The HTML codes are always in pairs, so the beginning tag and the ending tag always starts with a slash. Um, the same thing here, the first heading, that's uh, the beginning tag and the ending tag, that's HTML. Shotcut is creating files in XML, which is a similar type of language, another markup language. And here's an example of um, XML, kind of the same idea, the two tags. This is a note and this is the ending tag of the note. It's to someone and from someone. So same kind of idea, XML, that is what Shotcut uses. Let's go back to the video. If you wanted to, you could write an XML file by hand, open it up, and see it in Shotcut. Okay, so that's just an explanation of how Shotcut works. You could create your own XML file, open it in Shotcut. I'm betting there are better ways to do it though. As if you had been using Shotcut the whole time. Shotcut doesn't care who wrote the file as long as it's formatted correctly. Okay, so just like any code, it has to be formatted correctly. The XML has to be formatted correctly. And that's the same with HTML, that's the same with any computer coding language. Uh, has to have correct uh, syntax, which is a fancy word for grammar. My plan is to write code that writes out files like these. Okay, so Steven is going to write code that creates XML files. So we've talked about writing code that writes code in the past in other episodes that is meta writing we are meta coders the name of our company so that is what we do is we write code that writes code and that is what steven is about to show you ideally i want to say something like speed up my illustration from yesterday by a factor of two which would produce the xml as if i had used shotcut to write it Okay, so here Steven is showing us in this part of the picture, uh, he wants to write code and the way he writes code, um, this is not the actual code, but the idea is you would open up the parentheses and always close them. You always wanna have uh, pairs and maybe he'd write a function called speed up. He'd input the drawing, this is the drawing, and times two. So he wants to double 
the speed at which we see the drawing. As we're watching Stephen in these videos, you're seeing him draw a lot faster than he really is drawing. So he's talking about writing some kind of code that would then create an XML file that he could put into Shotcut that would speed up the drawing. Let's keep watching. I want speed up to be a kind of magic spell I can cast on any video file to make it as fast or as slow as I want it. Oh, did you like that? A magic spell. Coding is kind of like a magic spell, except if you know what it is that uh, takes away some of the mystery and some of the magic, but also it gives you a lot of power if you're able to create the code. In coding, if you want a magic word, you have to define that magic word. And I did. If you snoop in my GitHub, you'll see that it's not so different from what I wrote on this paper. All right, we are going to snoop in his GitHub a little bit later. Um, but so he's saying that the code that he actually did end up writing, he created a function called speed up, and uh, it sped up the drawings. I used my magic spell just now to take that illustration from yesterday and speed it up by a factor of 16, and again by a factor of 32, and once again by a factor of 64. Okay, so uh, for those of the, you who were watching the last minute, um, he was drawing, he was drawing faster, then he was drawing even faster. So here it says faster, even faster, super fast. So he used the code that he wrote that we will peek in his GitHub. Um, let's actually go there now. Um, this is Steven's GitHub uh, repository. GitHub is a a uh, company and a repository is a big fancy word for a place where you store all your code. It's also really nice because if you have other people working with you on the same code, everyone can look at it at the same time. That's what we're doing here. Um, so he created, he defined a function called speed up where he took in a video clip and he saw how fast he wants to speed it up. So this is some of the code that um, he was talking about that he created to speed up uh, this clip that we just saw. Let's keep watching. So each one is twice as fast as the other. Now I can easily nest one inside the other, inside the other, or do whatever creative things I want with them. The fact that I am able to hand edit the outputs of my own code creatively inside of Shotcut means I have successfully integrated coding with my creative pipeline. Okay, so Steven took the coding. We just saw his GitHub repository where he wrote code that speeds up the code and he has the fast, faster and super fast, or was it even faster and super fast? And he used Shotcut to take the the XML code that his uh, Dr. Racket code created, and he input uh, them one inside the other. So here's the big piece, here's the smaller piece, and here's the teensy weensy piece of the same images of Stephen drawing, and it is working. So let's go back and watch it get a little bit, we'll watch it from fast, and then faster, and then super fast. Here, we'll watch Creatively again. Creatively inside of Shotcut, means I have successfully integrated coding with my creative pipeline. So I hope you can see the difference. And just there. to complete the test, let's watch some of this weird video I just made. As you can see, the innermost box is the fastest and it will repeat four times. Uh, the middle box will repeat two times and the outer box is, uh, well, actually not going to finish before we... He okay, so uh, just wanted to show again what he was explaining this box was going the fastest, this box um, fast, but not as fast as the fastest, and the outer box didn't even get to finish. Let's keep watching the rest of his video. Actually, not going to finish before we... Here, I want to leave you with two... Okay, so we've just completed the first four minutes of Steven's video, and this is the last minute, the inhale section. This was the why did we do this part. Parting thoughts. First, to anyone who has ever taken a traditional coding class, you have gotten a lot of practice on the how. But the why is half the design cycle. 99% of coders that I meet are great on the exhale, but they gasp for breath on the inhale, and they faint from lack of air when you ask them to do anything remotely creative. Okay, so 
Stephen knows a lot of coders. He has been working in this industry for a really long time. And so what he's saying is that it's really important to know why you're writing the code, not just how you're writing the code. And a lot of people, and hopefully not anybody watching this video series, but a lot of people know how to write code, how to create um, software that works, but they don't really know why they're doing it. And then they're not able to be creative. And it's really important, I think we've talked about this in some of the other videos, it's really important to uh, think of something new to use your creative juices, uh, not just to create videos, but even just to create software that maybe doesn't seem like it requires creativity. If you can approach a problem in a creative way, uh, you'll probably come up with a better solution. Second, did you bring your paper? Go look at the code linked below. Can you draw a picture of how the two files that I wrote interact? Can you draw a picture of how the pieces of code within a particular file interact? So I think what he wants you to do is look through this code. This is the code that was linked at the bottom of the YouTube video. And... Um, look through it, see if you can read it, see if you can understand it, see how it is linked together. Uh, we aren't gonna look at all of this code right here, but um, in this video, but this is what we would start with, is this linked code, um, defining what a clip is, defining what speed up is. So here we're taking the, um, the clips and making them faster, just like we saw. So here are some different pieces of the code that Steven has created, video length, etc. Uh, so go ahead and take out your paper and walk through this uh, code. Let's finish up the video. A lot of students try to learn how to write code before they've learned how to read code or think on paper. Spend a few months trying to read and think about somebody else's code, then try to learn how to write. All right, so that's some good advice. Read other people's code. Maybe start with something um, fairly easy, like this example that Stephen gave you. Just start with pieces of it. Go through and read it. See if you can understand it. Some people put comments in their code that explains what they're doing. Not everyone does that. Some people use very clear um, function names and variable names. So clip would be the name of a video clip or speed up is a function that Steven created to speed up uh, the the video clip that you're looking at. So look at his, his parting words here are to read code, read a lot of code, read and you can find lots of code all over the internet, maybe in free uh, open source GitHub repositories. Read a lot of code and try to figure out what the code does before you even ever try to write your own. See how that changes things for you. It will. All right, thank you guys for uh, watching hopefully the first and second half of this Quarantine Coding Club episode number nine. Uh, this was really fun to go through this with you. Uh, again, my name is Coach Judith, and I look forward to seeing you in other episodes.